Hey, hey everyone, it's Sleepy Reader, Damien. I'm here with Sleepy Vlog number 82. So I, number 81 was way back around New Year's. Uh, so I haven't done these in a long time except for my Sleepy Duck vlogs I've been doing with my daughter. What is a Sleepy Vlog? It just means I'm gonna ramble on a bunch of different subjects rather than have my usual slightly focused video. Um, Really, I suppose everything I do on this channel, this channel is a vlog of my reading and thoughts about things along those lines. But for whatever reason, I I enjoy calling these rambles sleepy vlogs and numbering them. Um, and the numbering doesn't even include all the sleepy vlogs I've done because at one point I did something called the sleepy vlog countdown where I did I tried to do 30 vlogs in 30 days. I think it ended up taking me about 45 or 50 days. Anyway, I just got this giant weightlifting thing in the mail. Uh, Kirby Returns, one of these sort of oversized, super king size comics. Uh, there's a regular comic next to it. Um, it's, it's bigger than many of the those artist edition books. Uh, I think not the ones from the early 60s and earlier when when they were so when the original artwork was so large. But in any case, I love these things. I love big books. I'm kind of becoming a big book collector like that seems to almost be my priority. I just ordered a um, a super oversized version of the Incal uh, Mobius's one of Mobius's most famous stories done with Jordowski. And we'll see how large that really is. But that's supposed to be super oversized. And um, I think they're quite quite a good deal for the money. I mean, this is a hundred list price to hundred dollars. You can get it for a lot less online. Um, compare that to the price of comics these days. You know, these little things that cost a minimum of four dollars a piece. So ten of them are forty dollars. A lot of Marvel comics now. I was looking through here. A lot of them come out at five or six dollars. They have more pages, but not a whole lot more. Um, the pricing on comics does seem crazy. I, one thing I've been doing a lot lately is lots of long walks, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks. I've heard a lot of interviews lately with an older generation of writers. One was Jerry Conway, who you would think knows a lot about the industry. And he suggested an idea that I've often thought of wondering why they don't do it now. He said, well, they make their money on trades, but the floppies are an important part of the mix. Why not charge less for the floppies, knowing sort of penciling in on your financing that you're not going to make money off the floppies, but you'll get a chance to reach potentially reach more readers. And, um, that makes a lot of sense to me because I think you want to survive in the floppy. You want the floppies to survive because they do, even if they don't make a profit, I think they're, they're um, amortizing your expenses that you then, that eventually get you a trade. And, um, and on top of that, I think the readers of the floppies are often the people who promote the trades to everyone else, like channels like mine or just to your friends. A lot of a lot of times if I really love a series, I find myself buying a copy to give to friends as gifts or double dipping for myself. And if comics were cheaper, I'd probably do that even more. Um, so, yeah, I thought that made a lot of sense, but but we don't see any sign of that when I was reading this. Uh, previews and looking at the DC previews, seeing more and more books where they're jacking the price up higher and higher. There's um, there's these books um, that are reprints of the twelve page the twelve page original stories that were in DC's Walmart books. So this issue has twenty four pages, but it's a reprint, so it's already been paid for, so to speak. But they're still charging five dollars for it um now a lot of their four dollar comics only have 20 pages but still it just seems like it's a squeezing of the market and it's a downward spiral it seems now i've noticed a lot of the indie books now are more and more they seem to be catching on to the fact of 
give more in the floppies, uh, make the floppy readers appreciated. They don't publicize it much, but you often just find a lot more pages, a lot more extra stuff. Um, a great example being Ahoy Comics and, um, but other things like uh, here, I've got Die here. Uh, they just give, and those Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips comics, they just give you so much more in them. And I don't understand, well, I mean, I can kind of guess that Marvel and DC, they're so corporate, they want to squeeze things. Another thing in, in some podcasts and other things I've been reading, things just sound really dire at DC. <laughs> I almost, am, you know, just with the corporate takeover and all the mess that they seem to be making there. And I just wonder, you know, I, 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 I can't remember what podcast it was. It might, could it have been the, the uh, Publishers Weekly podcast? But some podcast made me feel like maybe DC is just going to implode that, that AT&T that owns DC now and doesn't care about it is just going to pull the plug on DC. I think that's, that's uh, more dire than it probably really will end up being. But but it kind of scared me and it made me sad because what if DC or Marvel can kind of pull uh, pull down the, uh, the comic book market? Because I really like reading uh, m comics weekly or monthly, getting those installments of the stories. I'm becoming, ve I'm very addicted to that. It's just a fun way and maybe having this YouTube channel and watching other people's YouTube channels adds to that. That weekly conversation is just really cool. Um, and I've been willing to pay a premium for that compared to waiting for the trades. But a lot of people aren't and I'm not always. And uh, this past three weeks, I haven't read any comics or I hadn't read any comics for about three weeks two weeks of vacation, then my daughter was sick and other stuff was coming going on when we got back. But I have this massive pull list. So I, my three weeks worth of comics ended up being 40 comics. So how do I catch up with that? And I realized I just have to cut. And so I've been in the process of the culling of my pull list. And I thought I'd show you the comics that I've culled or that I'm thinking about culling. Um, and I'm finding it kind of a pain, painful thing to do. I, right now, I, I've kind of went crazy in the last year, two years of just, hey, I want to read that. I'll just add it to my pull list. I've just decided comics are the thing I'm going to spend my money on. My, I have a lot, I'm old now and I have a lot more money to spend and I, that's what I want to spend it on. Um, I, obviously... I, I have my house paid off. I spend it on my daughter and my wife and all of that. But in terms of my own self, the thing I want to splurge on is comics. So, but despite that, there's only so much time. So I have, for starters, I have seven comics that I already dropped this morning. I sent an email to my, um, my comic dealer, my comic broker, my comic book shop that I have such a large pull list with, I get a 25% discount which I greatly appreciate. I appreciate their business or th their um, their appreciation of my business. I appreciate and I like going there. So I do want to, that's another reason why I want to keep it up. But I've decided to drop Red Sonja, which I've been enjoying quite a bit, but they've changed artists. They were slowly shifting in this artist, Eddie Q or Bob Q, something like that. My credits are at the back, Bob Q. And uh, and although I like the writing in here, uh, the art just, it's just a slog to get through the art. And when the story kind of slows down, then the art really, um, really gets in my way if I'm not totally charmed by the story. But so I have to cut stuff. Why not cut the art, the comic that gives me less pleasure because of both the art and the coloring here just are not to my to my taste. It's funny when they, they had this um, pinup fan art. And to me, that looks much more interesting than, than the way they draw Red Sonja in the comic. 
not not because they draw her less sexy in the comic, which they do, but um, and that fan art wasn't that sexy either. But they just don't put a ton of effort into, I guess, the detail, the atmosphere. They do the the um, this artist is telling the story uh, decently, but but that's all. There's no zing to the art. There's certainly no zing to the coloring for me. Maybe it looks better digitally. I don't know. So anyway. I'm dropping Red Sonja. I really enjoyed the first six issues of it, or maybe the first four issues is issue seven. And actually this special issue that was kind of a fill-in on the background of the, um, of the evil emperor was quite cool with the religion that they made up and the twists with the family. So if, if you like this art, not the art on the cover, but if you like, if you, if you like this art, this has a very good story to it, but gotta drop some stuff. I'm dropping Black Hammer slash Justice League. This was kind of accidentally on my pull list. I've gotten every other Black Hammer series, so I can see why the shop gave it to me. And I, when I first was in my pull list, I was like, oh, well, I'll, let, I'll blame them, but I get to read more comics. But I didn't like the first issue very much, or I just felt like it was a retread of everything I already know about Black Hammer. The second issue is more interesting, so I kind of had to... Uh, force myself to just go ahead and add it to the poll, add it to the drop from the poll letter that I sent out. Um, it's it's fun seeing the Justice League trapped in the Black Hammer world and the Black Hammer world dealing with the rather dickish, um, it's kind of like Lemire doesn't like, he likes his own creations better than he likes the DC world. So the people in the DC world seem like kind of the overzealous, um, doesn't stop to listen to people kind of cop in that you might see in, in some kind of cop show or something. But anyway, now I'm kind of curious to see how the rest of it plays out. One of the realities of dropping things in these modern days is you could read them, you could eventually get the trade, or you could get the trade from the library, or you could buy it on a digital sale later on, or you could be really bad and you could read it um, on an Ill illegal uh, digital comic site or you could read it my library has a digital comic site called Hoopla so I could eventually read it there or pick out the issues from the dollar boxes next year or in six months and I also still have the option of if I have a slow week or just given to temptation I can pick up issue three it'll be there probably on the rack at my comic book store um, Another one I decided to drop was Test, and I kind of decided to drop it with issue one, but I got issue two anyway, because I didn't get around to um, making the drops I'd planned to from my pull list last month. And this issue was better. I liked it more. Um, it also has kind of art that is un not very detailed and kind of sketchy like Red Sonja, but it works much better here somehow. And I'd say the coloring is much more suited to the story. <clears throat> and that's kind of a great cover. And Christopher Sabella, at least in this comic, has a very kind of poetic roundabout way of telling and writing his story. And it felt like a lot of work to me in issue two, in issue one, but I was starting to get used to it here. So I can see, you know, if I hear other people say this turned out to be a good series, I can see revisiting it sometime, but I'm dropping it for now. <clears throat> and that was also another kind of hard one. Here's an easy drop. I read three issues of Ignited. I actually didn't finish this issue. It was just hard to get through. Um, either I don't like the teenage characters or I don't like the way they're writing the teenage characters here. I don't like the way they're dragging out the story about the the problem with the school where there's been a shooting, a mass shooting and the trauma, which led to people developing superpowers. But I just feel like they're not getting to anything that interests me a whole lot, even though the subject of the trauma of shootings on teenagers in the schools where they happen certainly is a powerful subject, but um, just not working for me here at all. And this one had beautiful art and beautiful coloring. Um, so I hope to see Briones and Crossley again. 
I don't know, you know, if this is written by Mark Wade and another writer, both of whom have been in the past attacked a lot by Comicsgate. And I don't know if this is kind of their response to Comicsgate to some extent, um, or their little jab back at Comicsgate by um, picking a very political subject. You want politics? Okay, we'll give you politics. They, there really wasn't that much politics in Mark Wade comics before. Um, but it's really the portrayal of the teenagers and the pacing of the story and such that doesn't work for me. Here's another one that was a big disappointment, but I pretty much, when I read it, this might be the kind of comic that I would normally say, okay, I'm going to give it a few more issues because I like the idea behind it. And maybe the execution of the idea will become, become clear to me as they go on. But there are these knights, and they're in medieval times and in modern times. Other than that, what's going on is utterly unclear to me from what I read here. It might be partially the far fault of this art. This is one of those Aftershock comics that if you look at the copyright page, it's copyright by the artist and by, I'm uh, uh, sorry, by the writer, Colin Bunn, and by Aftershock Comics, not by the artist. So it may be this artist is some you know, European gun for hire who's just doing a quick and dirty job um, and not fully engaged, or maybe the fault of the script too, or both, both, or maybe it's mostly the fault of the script, I don't know. But they don't give you enough information to walk away from this comic, for me anyway, to say, okay, I really know what kind of comic this is and what it's about, and this first issue has really grabbed me and I want to read more. Um, the only thing that makes me want to read more is that usually I like Colin Bunn comics, and usually I like comics that involve medieval knights. <laughs> but that's I'm looking for stuff to cut, and that's too slim to go on. A real another real easy cut, and another writer who's been attacked a lot by Comicsgate people is Gail Simone, and there you, this could be interpreted as having some political stuff. There's a uh, there's a evil racist gang slash landlord, I'm not sure what, who's, who's trying to kick all these um, struggling poor people out of an apartment building. And for some reason, this character, the uh, used to be called Daredevil, but I guess they can't call him that, so they call him the death-defying devil. He's an out of copyright um, golden age character who used to fight the yellow claw but in this, it's contextless. This superhero just shows up in this situation. The bad guys are really bad. Um, the art's very uninspiring. There's just not much. T there's not much there, and there's certainly not much connective tissue. There's not much feeling of a superhero comic at all. So why do you have this bizarrely costumed character? And what does just questions that I'm not even interested in getting answered from reading this? So I'm dropping that. Another hard drop was Hawkman. Um, I really loved the first 12 issues of Hawkman, and then it's kind of drifted here and there, but been mostly good, but just not as good as before. And I feel I'm kind of gambling that it will continue to get less interesting to me. Um, I might be wrong. I, I, this one's a very likely candidate for on a slow week. I might still pick it up off the shelves. But the truth is, I can I am subscribed to DC Universe, and in six months, uh, the next issue will come out on DC Universe, so I can always read it there, if not get it from my library and whatnot. And um, I just heard someone talking about how the sales of this have been plummeting, so I wonder how much longer it has to go. What if it just ends after the uh, the year of the villain stuff ends? And I also can't help wondering, like. Is this story weaker because its its ultimate goal is to tie into the the year of the villain stuff? So those have all definitely been dropped, but I want to drop more. I wanted to drop at least ten. I've already dropped seven, but maybe even more than that. So here are some that I'm considering dropping. It's they're even more painful to drop. This one in particular because I think it might be one of the best comics out there in the indie world right now. It's Die. But I think they were on a break after issue five and they've come back and I was having trouble following this. Um, there was at one point 
there's two white haired characters and I guess they're sisters or one's really a man who looks like a woman in the world of die I don't know and they both have this whitish blonde hair and we were inside the head of one and then I think we switched inside the head of the other and I didn't realize that for the longest time there's all kinds of other references there's this dog here called case and I it might be a program or a machine or it might be a person turned into one I don't know I just couldn't remember if we'd already been told it um, Kieran Gillen writes as if you know what he knows and especially after a two or three month gap that was just too hard for me so the logical thing to do is to turn this into a a wait for trade um, type of read where I'll get a whole bunch at once and won't have this problem of trying to figure out what's going on it still will be something you have to read very carefully I think to understand all the implications of things the one the one caveat there is I don't if the art has grown on me a lot I didn't like Stephanie Hahn's art at first uh, I thought it was too stiff and I thought the colors lacked pizzazz um, like they were too on the nose or something but anyway um, I now like her art. I really the arts really grown on me and you get to appreciate the art better in the floppy form if they had a hardback with great binding then that would be even better but to switch to paperback um, trade trade editions uh, collected editions will mean I don't get as good of a look at the art but it really it really was hard for me to read I'm just not a smart enough reader or whatever to pick up that way despite so that goes contrary to my claim about being really into <clears throat> the serial reading and I am up to a point and then I'll hit these books where it says oh my god I'm an idiot for trying to read this in individual issues or they're idiots for writing the individual issues the way they do and I did this has a kind of handy character kind of thing but even with that I still managed to get myself confused and I don't understand why the character who I think died right at the end of the last issue is dead but alive it's something maybe about gaming I don't understand I, I do wish they kind of filled us in a little more for people who aren't as close to the the world of uh, role-playing games and maybe even people close to the world of role-playing games might not pick up on all these things but that's a nice looking page this is a really I, I still think it's a really top comic and I'm thinking of dropping it I kind of was hoping to read the second issue of second coming and decide to drop it um, but there are a lot of aspects of it I enjoyed and while I certainly think they have the right to present their own they being mostly the writer Russell but this great art by this fellow Pace was his first name Richard Pace I don't know if I've ever heard of him before um, but I really love the artwork in here so they have the right to present God the way they want but I feel like what they're, re they're really setting up this dichotomy between what you might view as the Old Testament God and um, and a superhero and then versus Jesus and that's a really interesting dichotomy but since they're they're using the name God and they're presenting him as the negative point of view and Jesus as the positive point of view it just it creates problems to me in their argument um, this is where more metaphorical characters if you had a godlike character and a Jesus-like character but you weren't attacking the idea of God because they aren't really right Jesus is God too they're just saying I like this kind but they've kind of set God up as this very the regular God the God the Father as this very negative character uh, sloppy doesn't care about mistakes doesn't care about lots of deaths basically very unfeeling and um, <clears throat> and that's one way of reading the Old Testament I suppose but when you're doing it as a discussion in the world with lots of believing Christians there there just could be better ways I feel like to present it but I suppose it's probably very amusing to a lot of other people who um, are enjoying seeing this joke on God <clears throat> we go to a mall in heaven in this issue so there's a lot I like about it and I, I don't think I am gonna drop it <clears throat>
<clears throat> but anyway, uh, I don't feel like I'm, in terms of the whole God, Jesus stuff in here, I think expressing myself and my feelings about it, my likes and dislikes of what they do here is almost, it's beyond me. I, I, it's something I can't fully explain. So I don't know. If you're about to argue with me down below in the comments about God and Jesus, be careful because I don't know what I'm talking about or I can't explain what I'm feeling. Here's another one, Sea of Stars, I'm really torn about. Uh, it's definitely a story I don't need to read. Um, it was I liked it better in the second issue than the first issue. I love the art and the color. Um, but I still don't care a lot about about these characters or what's going to happen to them. Um, I don't take it serious. You know, my science fiction reading self doesn't take it seriously as a really cool science fiction book or anything along those lines. So I should drop it. I'm just a little hesitant because it is kind of fun to read. <clears throat> Coffin Bound. I was super excited that um, there was going to be a new Dan Watters, Waters comic because I love his work on Lucifer <clears throat> at Vertigo, but the current Vertigo series, I assume soon to be labeled something else, not Vertigo. But this one, I I found not immediately appealing. And again, if I wasn't trying to cut my pull list, this would be an obvious one to give three or four issues to. But I felt I felt like there were a lot of cool elements in here, but I felt extremely ungrounded that the the world here is just built on frosting, so to speak, with no cake beneath it. Um, frosting of fantasy ideas, kind of horror fantasy ideas. Um, and a really gruesome one at that. Um, a really gruesome scene in here also, which I'm not a total fan of, of the grotesqueness of it. Um, but lovely art, lovely coloring, lots of great dialogue, lots of little ideas that are good. I'm just not sure of the overall idea. It might be that, you know, I like this writer on Lucifer who exists in an already established universe that I already know about and that the writer already knows about. Um, you know, the, the Sandman Lucifer universe that's been well established by Neil Gaiman and Mike Carey. But I probably, this is, this is one of the really hard ones to drop. And here's one that's both easy and hard. Batman Detective Comics. I dropped the regular Batman at issue 50. And I've been reading Detective Comics on and off. Um, the current run, issue 50, uh, the Tom King run. And I, I really wanted this to be the good, this to be my Batman comic because it's written by Peter Tomasi. And when I first read this issue, I thought, oh, well, yeah, Peter Tomasi's doing a pretty good job. I should stick with it. But then I thought about it a little. I haven't liked a number of the other Peter Tomasi issues particularly. And I realized in the end, I don't care too much about this Batman story. And um, while this artist is good, he's, he's not grabbing me as much as some of the other artists who've done detective comics recently, like Brad Walker and... Um, the guy who did the two issue Spectre story. I can't remember what that guy's name was. Anyway, so I may, I probably will. This one probably will make it to the drops. Another one, hard one, is Collider, which I might have dropped with issue one, but got for me a lot better with issue two. I started to like the story. I like the rhythm and the pace of the story. Um, it has a lot of realistic cursing in it which is still kind of weird for me especially in a dc comic um at its it at its core it has a, a little bit of that case of more frosting than cake because hey i've got a black hole inside of me well what does that mean what does it mean to have a black hole inside of me hey aliens are after me because i have a black hole inside of me what do the aliens want the why did his father was it his father or his mother have a black hole inside of her and that he inherited and how do you possibly inherit a black hole from outer space that suddenly comes to you and 
all of that is just mush. It doesn't, it's meaningless mush at the moment. Um, and apparently the black hole lets him maybe travel from place to place and time through time and space, I guess, and give them the ability to other things. But and those are my criticisms of it. But at the same time, like I say, it was very lively read. Um, so I, I think I'll give it at least one more issue. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I got to find stuff to 